Wow. Does that make you guys want to dance, that music? No? Maybe? Good morning, everyone. My name is Haley Bryant. If I have not met you yet, I am an associate youth director here at Christ United. Somebody's waving at me. Hello. Good morning. Okay, just really quick, if you're very, very brave, you can raise your hand and answer this question. Um, raise your hand if you're like a little bit competitive. Okay, 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 very good. Okay, this one's easier. Raise your hand if you're good at pickleball. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever played pickleball, the sport. Okay, a few people have played this sport of pickleball. I see. Okay, are you nervous about where the sermon's going? Okay. Pickleball is a new sport. The court kind of looks like this. Um, it looks a little bit like tennis, but you have like a wiffle ball that has holes in it, and then you have like paddles that are a little bit smaller. A couple of months ago, one of our youth kids, her name is Sarah, she's sitting right here, one of the youth kids was off of school for a day, and we have pickleball happening over at our sports and rec center like every single day. So she wanted to come play pickleball, and she told me that she would be there. I was like, oh, that sounds like a great lunch break activity for me to do, and it's right downstairs from my office. I'll just come down and play pickleball with you. So when she got there, she texts me. She's like, hey, I'm here, and I come down, and we like go onto the basketball court, and there's a bunch of very kind retired men there, and they're like, hey, um, do you guys know how to play pickleball? And we're like, well, kind of, and they explain the rules to us, and we're like, okay, we've played in youth a couple of times, you know, and... Uh, we're, but we're kind of new. Um, I continued to serve it out of bounds over and over and over and over, and everyone who was on my team lost the whole entire time. Our other beginner, Sarah, won every single game, okay? She's really good. <laughs> Don't play pickleball against her. She still continues to go back and play pickleball, and she's become very good friends with some of these men. Um, I have not gone back. Instead, I went back up to my office immediately after losing and I started Googling um, where to buy pickleball uh, paddles. And then I read two articles about how to improve your pickleball game. And then I text three of my friends to see if they wanted to start playing pickleball with me. Um, maybe I'm a little bit competitive, I don't know. And maybe there's another way to look at this. Let's go to our scripture today, which is in Matthew, starting at verse 1, we're in chapter 20. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarian, he sent them into the vineyard. They went out, and around 9 in the morning, he saw others standing around in the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again, around noon, there and three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went and found others standing there. And he said to them, why are you just standing around doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard called his manager and said, call the workers in and give them their wages, beginning with the last one hired and moving finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received a denarian. When those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarian. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. These who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had, work, had to work all day in the hot sun. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our story, this person who runs the household makes an agreement with the first workers. Um, those workers have some voice in what they're going to be paid because there's this conversation that happens. The agreement goes like this. Um, you will come and work and I will pay you one denarian. This is the standard payment for a day's work and it would feed a family for around three to six days. It seems like whenever the landowner comes into the marketplace, then they hire everyone who's standing there. Everyone there goes to the vineyard. So when he comes back at 9 a.m. and there's more people there, he comes and also hires them and just says, okay, I'll pay you a fair amount. They don't 
They don't get to uh, agree on a price, but he just says, I'll pay you a fair amount, and they go with him. Three more times, then he comes back and finds people in the market without work. Why do there keep being more people? Where were they first thing in the morning? Well, maybe they had to take care of a parent or a child. Um, maybe they came from another town because they couldn't find work in their own town, so they've come over here. Um, maybe they finished another job and are coming in for a second shift. We don't really know, but we know that they are hired to come work here. Here's where we get a, just a little bit of drama. The people who come in last um, are paid first, paid one denarian, and then when it gets to our first laborers, they're also paid the same amount, and they throw a fit. Well, not really, but they aren't very happy. The sun has been hot, we've been out in it all day long. I'm an oldest child, so I understand this. I've been here the longest. Why are you not paying more attention to me? But the first workers don't really want equality because like, everybody's already been paid the same amount. The first workers want elevation. They want recognition that they've been here longer. But I think what they fail to realize is that they've broken the sense of community. They could have just been happy for their coworkers and been excited that they got paid well because the first workers were given what they needed and the last workers were also given what they needed, a day's wage. Today we did a simple service project, writing little cards, maybe you're still working on them for some people who might need cheering up. We do a lot of service here at Christ United. We pack food packs, we teach kids VBS, and we leave this place and we go repair homes, we go take eyeglasses to people in need, and we pack lunches for people who don't have food. If you would like to get involved in any of those things, they're all available for your participation. Serving others is part of our mission statement because it's who we are here. The place where we might get it wrong is when we make it about us. Maybe I'm the only overcompetitive person in the room, I don't know. But I think that maybe this happens to all of us sometimes. Every single day we receive messages about not having enough and doing enough, and maybe we make service a competition. Everywhere we looked, we're being asked to spend more money and do more. People pay a lot of money to make sure that every single place we lay our eyes, they're trying to get us to buy something. Our emails and our social media tell us there's places that need us to volunteer and that jobs need to be done. I know because I send those emails to you. And doing more looks good for our service hour timesheets and on our college applications. Um, it looks great on our resumes. Being on com a committee or on the PTA looks great to other people. And I'm no, I don't just wanna diss on those things because those jobs need to be done. We need committee members and we need greeters and we need service people. But sometimes we might roll our eyes whenever we're volunteering and we see other people standing around. Don't they know that we need help? Maybe you're tutoring someone and you're tutoring a kid and they need help in a specific subject that you're not great at, but you're the only one there. So what are you gonna do? You wish that other people would show up like you show up. It's kind of like we're the laborers who arrived first at the market and agreed to the terms at the outset and now we're not quite sure that it's fair. Let's see how the story ends. We'll start back at verse 12. These who were hired last worked one hour and they received the same pay as they did even though they had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But he replied to one of them, friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give this to the one who was hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I'm generous? 
So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The first laborers don't understand, so the owner explains it to them. The point is not that some get more than others. The point is that everyone gets enough. No matter what time the laborers arrived, they all need the same thing. They needed work, and they received work, and they received payment for work. What's, an, what's important here is the message that we see scattered throughout all of the Gospels. God cares that everybody is a part of the family of God no matter what time they show up. In 1988, around the peak of her fame, Dolly Parton set up the Dolly Wood Foundation. After launching her foundation, she vowed to provide high school students in her home county with a $500 scholarship to help them attend the nearby college. She also set up a buddy program in high schools in that county, and as a result, the high school dropout rate declined from 35% to just 6% in one year. Dolly Parton grew up in rural Tennessee, and she grew up in a lot of poverty. Her dad couldn't read, and so she, after she became successful, began a foundation to promote literacy. It's called Imagination Library, and the program launched in 1995, and it grew really quickly. People who sign up are mailed books that are age-appropriate, and it's open, at first it was open to all kids under five in her home county. But it was such a huge success that in 2000, they continued to move it across the United States. In 2003, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library had mailed one million books. It would prove to be the first of millions, many millions of books sent to children. After opening the program to everyone in the United States, the program launched in Canada in 2006, the United Kingdom in 2007, Australia in 2013, and Ireland in 2019. In 2022, two million books were mailed each month. That is such an impressive legacy of service to other people. But what makes our story cool and what makes the game of pickleball really exciting isn't that it's super intense. You can pick it up on a Sunday afternoon, and yes, you might get beat by teenagers, but you can still make it a part of your daily life. And the same is true of service. We think that only big lives, people with lots of money, or everything done on a big scale matters. But each of us have already served in small ways. In February, our church hosted a special called conference of the North Texas um, United Methodist Church. If you don't know a ton of Methodist politics, that's fine, maybe better, I don't know. But just know that here, a whole bunch of people were coming from around the conference to meet in our building to discuss the business of the church. So also know, it was kind of a day where we anticipated some disagreements and some strife among people that were gathering together. Whenever I arrived on that Saturday morning, then our church members, people here, um, were holding the door open and welcoming everybody and smiling. And then throughout the day, then I saw people, um, you know, refilling water and handing out snacks and pointing out where people needed to be going. I think that really matters. Holding doors for people matters, and starting a foundation like Tully matters. They matter to, they both matter to God, and maybe they even matter the same to God. Our story of workers in the field shows us that every single person's work matters. That holding open a door seems like such a small job, and it's easy enough for anyone to do. It might not have even been worth giving up that Saturday morning for, but then I remember how friendly those door greeters were, and how important it was to that tension-filled day to be greeted with a smile. It just set a tone. No work that's being done in service to others is small. It all matters. 
pickleball was the fastest growing sport in America in 2021 and in 2022, and it's on track to hold that record again in 23. With this newfound growth, it's kind of surprising that it's been around since the 1960s. I was surprised to find this out. In the summer of 1965, Joel Pritchard and his friend Bill Bell finished playing golf and came back to Pritchard's home and found that their families were just sitting around with nothing to do. They lived in Washington State, and so it was a really nice day outside, and they wanted an activity for everyone. So there was an on the Pritchard property, there was an old badminton court, and so they went to go find some supplies, and as they're digging through the garage, they could not find a whole set for badminton. So they did what anybody who hangs out with children does and improvised. So they found some ping pong paddles and a ball that was like perforated, and they go out to the court, and originally they kept it at like badminton height, which is 60 inches, I read, I didn't know. And they decided that um, that was kind of too high and that the ball bounced really well on the asphalt. So they lowered down the net and started hitting the ball back and forth. The next weekend, they invited another friend over and these guys kept working on a plan of how to form rules for pickleball. All the time, they kept in mind that the goal of this is to be a game that every single person can play. They wanted it to bring people together and to connect people with one another. Today, just about every day of the week, you'll find people over in our sports and rec building playing pickleball. Sarah regularly plays over there um, and has made friends with a whole bunch of the people there. All skill levels are accounted for. When I left the pickleball game and I was mad and focused on winning, I was missing the point. It's not about who the best pickleball player is, it's about playing together. For the workers in the vineyard, it wasn't about what time they arrived, it was about showing up. May we too show up in service of others, knowing it isn't a competition, it's about working together. Amen.